All right. It's like straight water and shit, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, I thought this was breakfast with Tiffany. Yeah. Breakfast with Tiffany. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, we do have a client that is on the news now. For that Courtney Hicks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good things? Mm-hmm. She's a new Yeah, she, yeah. She's all in here. Oh, oh, she's not on the air. <laughs> person. All right. It's the, so the book was Extreme Ownership. It's by Jocko. Anybody not know who Jocko is? Jocko is a Navy SEAL who uh, has gotten out of the military, and he advises Fortune 500 companies. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, what does a Navy SEAL combat veteran have to say to Fortune 500 companies? Why would they hire him? as an outside contractor to help their business. How could you possibly help their business? Well, a little background story on me, why this would be, why does this matter for me personally? I am also ex-military, I was also in combat arms. I was an infantry soldier with 82nd Airborne. If you guys don't know what that is, that's the highest level of infantry that you can do in the United States Army until you get to Special Operations Command, which would be great, Army Rangers, and special forces. I was on a quick reaction force, a QRF team in Baghdad attached to special forces while I was there. So his story, Jocko's story, was very, not very similar, but I had a a very similar experience and understood exactly what he was talking about. Now, when you go to the United States Army and you go into an infantry program, as you get higher up in the infantry program, you go through certain schooling that teaches you about this type of thing, extreme ownership. So it starts out in basic training where you're learning to run a fire team of three people, a squad unit of six people, which would be two fire teams, and then a platoon size, which would be four squads. Does everybody understand that? So you slowly throughout your training learn to take care of each one of those organizations. First, taking care of yourself when you get there day one, then leading up to taking care of a fire team of three people, eventually being able to take care of six people, and then into a full platoon. Why does this matter? What does this have to do with anything I'm talking about? Jocko talks about in this book, and he also has other Navy SEALs who who talk about their experiences in war at the highest level, why these things are so important. Why is it so important to have extreme ownership? And what actually is extreme ownership? There's a story that he talks about, which in Ramadi, they were doing combat uh, movements and they had an issue where they had fratricide. Anyone not know what fratricide is? It's where you fire on your own people. It's blue on blue. It is no good. It is the worst thing that can happen in the military. You do not want to do as they're figuring out what happened, because if you don't know, if you're while you're in the military, it's not just free go. You don't just get to fire around the people, and everything's all good like the movies that you go. Home. You have investigations from every firefight you have. You count rounds. People want to know what happened, who did what, who shot, why did you shoot. What there's a whole list of things that have to happen afterwards that you go through after a firefight to include picking up bodies. Right? You know, just leave dead bodies out there. But Everybody thought you just leave them. That's not true. All right. And when you go through this, when Jocko is going through this first initial <coughs> investigation, he realized that you can only point the finger at yourself when you're a leader. All right. And that as you're coming up, you're a leader even now if you don't know it. You're in charge of yourself. Okay. Right now, all of us are in charge of ourselves. We have to police ourselves. As you move up in this company, you will be taking care of more people, right? Let's say you're taking care of your truck, right? And you are in charge and you are taking care of one person. If your buddy makes a mistake, forgets something, does something wrong, inevitably it's on you, okay? It's your fault. You have to take ownership of that team because you're in charge. So even though your buddy might have made the mistake, it still falls upon you. Maybe you didn't give him the right information. Maybe you didn't explain it to him enough. Maybe he just didn't understand what you were talking about. But no matter what, when you get to the point of leadership, you are in charge. The only person you can point the finger at is you. 
worst thing you can do is start looking around for who's at fault when you're in charge, pointing the finger at everybody else. What you need to do is turn the finger on yourself and figure out what you did wrong or what you could have done to fix the situation. What you have done, what should you have said or explained or how did you not get the point of this? And that's gonna be the theme as you move up through any job, as you get more leadership, you're gonna learn that you have to take ownership for everything that happens. Jeremy is at the top of the food chain here. Anybody makes a mistake here and does something incorrectly, right? Inevitably, who does it fall on? That's correct. I've, I've felt that feeling before. So like you're saying with Jocko, if uh, SEAL shot U.S. Army um, soldiers, ultimately, although he didn't pull the trigger, he's still responsible for what's going on out there because that's his soldiers, his platoon, his battlefield, right? Correct. 100% correct. No matter what, that's what he came to. He recognized that he had to, he had to like, it was a thing. It's a, it's a really important serious thing in the military to shoot your own people. So when you're standing in front of there, the tendency is to want to do this to save one's job. What you need to do when you're in a leadership position is do this. I'm at fault. I made a mistake. Obviously, I didn't tell enough. I didn't give enough information. I wasn't clear enough. I didn't go over the movements enough. I, we didn't practice enough. Not everybody understood. There's something else going on there and typically problem starts at the top and works its way down. It doesn't start at the bottom and work its way up. Everybody thinks it will be that, but it's not. All right? And everybody can take extreme ownership of themselves today. And what does that mean? When you come in here, come in a little bit early. Take ownership and pride in your vehicle. Make sure it looks nice. Put stuff away. Have things ready to go. It shouldn't be Jeremy and Brian pointing fingers telling you what to do. At a certain point, we need to start taking ownership for ourselves and really trying to work for yourself to try to help the entirety of the team grow together. Okay, that's the most important piece of extreme ownership is realizing that if there's a problem, most likely the problem falls on you. You did something wrong. And if you're in a leadership position, you are in charge. If your buddy didn't fuck up for you, you fucked up. Okay, it's just what it is. Going forward, I, I recommend that everybody take that take the time to read the book. It is very good for everyone else. I have PTSD. I really do enjoy reading it. But it's an interesting story, and you guys will probably get a lot out of it. And also, take ownership for your lives, starting with first thing in the morning. What Jordan Peterson said, make your bed. Go lift weights in the morning. Eat good food. Live a good life. Be a good man. Be on time. Take ownership for yourself, and all these things will work out for you in the future. Thank you. Is that good? That was great. Thank you. Oh, good job, man. So basically, yeah, round of applause. So basically, Jocko takes what, how they lead SEAL teams, and he started the business and coaches other businesses. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, he, uh, the Fortune 500 companies, their their leadership. In fact, he tells a story about a guy who's like, he there were two teams, and his team wasn't doing well, and he was like, it's only because the other guys are better than my guys, and they're like, all right, that's fine. So they switched teams. And lo and behold, what happened? The teams that switched, he had the superstars, and he still wasn't able to uh, produce. So what does that mean? It falls on him clearly. Clearly, he is not leading correctly. He's, he wasn't able to express himself correctly, and the people didn't matter. It was the leadership that was the problem. Cool, appreciate it. Um, this has been, uh, really briefly, the best start of moment season. We've got a bunch of great new guys hired. Uh, we'll have upwards of 20 people here this year. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> From Friday until now, I have 18 accepted jobs I have to schedule. Uh, we've gotten at least uh, 40 overall door hangers, wouldn't you say? Yeah, 40 plus. Yeah, what? 40 plus. And so the 18 I just spoke about is not none of that. That's all that came in over the weekend. So we're getting jobs on the schedule. Door hangers are flying off. We got the guys to do the work. And um, next month we have shrub maintenance hop back in. So that's two guys off of mowing. So we'll gradually get busier and busier. Um, we got four guys out sick right now. Uh, my goal of this meeting was actually to go over uh, speaking to customers. Brian was sick. I wasn't able to practice with him, you know, go over these examples. That was actually a 
recommendation from Chris, so appreciate that. When we have new people, we need to coach them up on what to say in certain situations. Uh, so we will do that later this week uh, when all the guys that are out sick return, so that way they can see that conversation as well. Um, let's get started. Let's do it. We got some shoes. Um, Bailey and Dylan, you can grab those. Can I see them? You, you yeah, you can. Connor and Bailey, y'all are gonna meet at Kathy Hagelson and split that clean up. So these are these are the ones, huh? These are the baddies. Yeah, you and Brandon are working together for long. I don't like these. Yeah, but you look like a douche here when you're wearing them. 